All right, so today I want to show you some ball pythons that I have for sale. And these are the ones that I hatched out last year. And last year I had a really good year. I actually hatched out 99 ball python hatchlings, which was my second best year. I think my best year I hatched out like a, almost 130, which is kind of crazy. And out of all those that I hatched last year, I'm down to just 10 of them. And some of these, as a matter of fact, two of them I actually pulled out and had them marked as holdbacks. I was going to use them as future breeders. And I got to the point during the year where I was, I was looking at all my holdbacks, I was looking at the empty tubs, and I decided I don't have enough tubs for all these holdbacks, so I decided to post a lot of them over on Morph Market. And usually every single year I kind of force myself just to hold back two snakes every single year. And this year I hatched out so much really awesome stuff, I ended up holding back five snakes, and I'm running out of room. I think I only have four more tubs for holdbacks for this fall, which is kind of of crazy and then I'll be completely full as far as all my breeders and my grow outs. So what I want to do is I'm going to start pulling out these snakes. I kind of want to show you in detail some of the personalities uh, as far as aggression. None of these are aggressive. Uh, eight out of ten are actually doing really good on frozen thawed weaned rats. <laughs> They're getting really big which is kind of amazing. And then two of them are kind of stuck on uh, live. They're kind of going back between frozen thawed and live. I have to keep going back to live for some reason that they're just kind of stubborn. I never really had that problem before. Well, I get hatchlings that are this old that are still kind of finicky with frozen thought. It's kind of unusual for these two snakes. And a lot of times I'll tell people, if you want a really good deal on ball pythons, the best time to buy is in the spring. Go to your reptile shows in the spring. Because essentially what you're getting is you're getting the stuff that the, the breeders didn't sell the previous year and they've been feeding it all winter long. As a matter of fact, on some of this stuff, I say like on my low end stuff, I'm probably almost breaking even, maybe losing some money on this because you know you actually are feeding them and changing the bedding, you know, through most of the year, and they're actually getting pretty big to the point where you got a lot of money into them, but they're not really worth that much as far as you know some of the some of the lower end stuff, like the like the normals, normal possible heads and stuff like that. But I do have a couple of really awesome snakes that if I didn't have five holdbacks already, I probably would be keeping myself. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through and pull them out and show them to you. If you're interested in any of these, you can actually contact me through Morph Market and I'll leave the link underneath this video. If you expand the description, I'll actually leave a link in there. If you try to contact me in the comments section, it doesn't really work because I have so many comments over here on YouTube. But on Morph Market, let me tell you, I'm definitely paying attention over there if you want to contact me. It's just a simple, like almost like email, but it goes through Morph Market. It's like the Morph Market messaging system. So I'm just going to start pulling snakes and I want to show you some of these awesome hatchlings. All right, so I'm going to start with this guy. Take a look at this. His name is Dusty, and I can't believe I still have Dusty. <laughs> I actually had this marked as a holdback, and I said, all right, I'm going to actually post this over on Morph Market. And then for a while, I actually had two people kind of fighting over the snake, and for whatever reason, they both backed out and decided not to buy it. So here I am with Dusty, thinking about keeping him as a breeder again if he doesn't sell. I'm, I'm pretty sure this guy's going to sell. This He's got some really powerful genetics. This is a Super Blast with the Super Pastel and the Pinstripe. And he has Enchi in there, which reduces the pattern. And he's a 100% Het Desert Ghost. Really super powerful breeder. So if you bred this to any snake, all the offspring would at least be Pastel. So you get no normals out of it. And if you bred it to a Visual Desert Ghost, half the offspring would be Pastel Desert Ghost, which is hands down one of the best Desert Ghost combinations that you can make. And then of course you'd have Enchi thrown in there too. Kind of an interesting head and an interesting face. Has green eyes, you can see the green eyes from the Pastel in there. Pretty interesting. It's got a pretty clear belly. That's from uh, the Pinstripe, usually gives a really clear belly on the Pinstripes. Look at how big he's getting. He's getting really super huge. I can't believe how big he is. He's almost, I'd say he's probably, I should get a weight on these, uh, an accurate weight, because these guys have gained quite a bit of weight. I'll actually update the website before these post over on Morph Market, and I'll put some accurate weights over there. But that guy's looking really good. No genetic defects. 
in any of the snakes from last year. Looking really good. Clear belly, clear fat belly. Look at how fat he is. Uh, I just fed him, I think it's been three or four days since their last meal, so I was feeling pretty confident as far as pulling him out. Look at how big he is. Really super huge. Very friendly, very curious. No problem with aggression with any of these hatchlings. That's a really awesome snake. If it doesn't sell, I'd be happy to keep this one for my six hold bag. I don't know if I'm going to hold back six for this year, but that's a really awesome snake. All right, so the last one I just showed, that was a male. I wasn't sure if I actually mentioned that with Dusty. Dusty is a male. Here's another male. This guy's name is Bobble. Take a look at how beautiful this is. This was actually another one of my holdbacks. I was considering using this as a holdback. This is... Uh, a banana pinstripe Enchi 100% head clown and I was kind of thinking about working the pinstripe into clown I absolutely love the pinstripe clown combinations it's pretty awesome and this guy is a male maker so if you breed this to something else all the banana offspring come out as males all the non bananas come out as females very friendly, very curious, <laughs> as with all my snakes. This guy's got a clear belly. Usually all the bananas have a really clear belly. Look at how fat he is, really super chunky. I'm thinking this guy's almost ready to breed. Look at how big he is, pretty awesome. If he's not ready, I'd say he's probably, I don't know, if I was to guess, maybe he's maybe 400 grams on this guy, I don't know. I'll have to get a weight on these, but yeah, he's looking really good. Kind of has an interesting head, head stamp on the top of his head, almost like uh, lines on the side of his face. Kind of has a, I don't know if you can really see that, but it kind of has a really orange head, yeah, kind of a yellowish orange head. Kind of an interesting, interesting looking head pattern on the top. Really awesome, friendly snake, wrapping himself up in a pretzel. <laughs> That is Bobble. All right, so here's another male. That, this one I had marked as a holdback too. I had all these marked as holdbacks. <laughs> this one is a Super Pastel, 100% head desert ghost on this guy. Pretty awesome snake. Really friendly, really curious. His name is Pluto. Uh, yeah, what can I tell you about Pluto? Usually the super pastels have a mainly clear belly. It's a little bit of speckling. You, sometimes your pastels will have some speckling. Usually with the super pastel, it'll be more clear than just a regular pastel. Uh, usually it has a washed out head from the super pastel. You can definitely tell the difference between the pastel and the super pastel from the washed out head. Uh, usually with the super pastel you have a jumbled up pattern. Usually you have like these highlights in the middle here from the super pastel. Really beautiful snake. I absolutely love the super pastels. And again if you breathe this to something else everything comes out at least pastel. You'll get no normals on this guy. And usually they have pretty green eyes on the pastels and super pastels. This guy's got pretty green eyes. I've noticed if you actually work spider into uh, pastel, you'll get like a super bright green eye. Sometimes if you actually work desert ghost in there too, you get a, a really super bright green eye. This guy's really curious. <laughs> and look at how big and chunky he's getting. That is, I'd say these are almost ready to breed. Look at how big he is. That's an awesome snake. All right, so here is my problem child. This is Smitty. We named this one Smitty. This one is a pinstripe female. I'm actually surprised this one didn't sell yet. This is a female 100% het clown on this one. So uh, it's one of those things I was, you know, for me, I would love to work pinstripe into clown. I just have so many holdbacks. <laughs> I just can't hold them all back. This one would be a great breeder too, as far as, you know, breeding this with a visual clown and getting some pinstripe clowns, which would be pretty awesome. And this guy, this one is stuck on mice, uh, live mice only. Uh, there's been a couple times where I can kind of trick them into a frozen thawed mouse, but I'd say most of the times I try a frozen thawed mouse and it'll refuse and then I'll have to do a live mouse, which is 
It's, it's kind of frustrating because usually at this point, this big of a snake, you'll actually get them on frozen thought almost every single time. So not sure what's going on with this one. It's kind of unusual for a pinstripe too because, you know, pinstripes usually aren't that picky of an eater, which is kind of interesting. And the pinstripe is definitely one of my favorite combinations. Uh, one of the brightest gold snakes you get. Look at how bright gold it is. Kind of has the scrunched up alien head pattern on the side. Pretty awesome. A lot of the pinstripes, some of the pinstripes will have like a really clear back and then some of them have kind of like a broken up pattern on the back. Usually your pinstripes will have kind of black eyes. It's got kind of black eyes if you can see that. Kind of, if I get my light up by the camera where you can see the, <laughs> the black eyes. So that is pretty awesome. The other thing with the pinstripe is usually if you breed it with pastel, the pastel really mixes with the pinstripe to really explode the pattern. So a lot of times if you have pinstripe in a combination, you can also tell if you have pastel in there or not, depending on if the, if the pattern's really exploded in the pinstripe. Even if you can't see the, the color of the pastel in a lot of your combinations, a lot of times you can actually see it in there from the influence on the pinstripe. But that's a really beautiful girl right there. Alright, so take a look at this boy. This guy's name is Elastica. <laughs> one of the last names I put in my name jar is a suggestion from one of the people under my videos. I actually uh, asked for name suggestions for snakes and they threw in Elastica, <laughs> which is a pretty cool name. This one's kind of interesting. It's a, it's a normal male, 100% uh, het clown. And every single head clown that I produce this year, I've noticed that it's a lot brighter. If you can actually compare it to some of the other normals, this one is, uh, the, so I think it's the influence of the head clown pretty much across the board. You mix head clown with anything and it really brightens the color of the snake. Even with the normals or even with some of the other combinations, you add head clown. And I only noticed it this year because I produced a lot of head clowns <laughs> when I bred that banana inchy clown. And uh, didn't produce any clowns this year, but I produced a whole bunch of head clowns and a lot of banana stuff too, which is pretty awesome. Awesome. This guy is priced just about as a normal, I'd say. Not much more than a normal. Getting really big. Eating me out of house and home for what, what I'm selling for. I think I'm losing money on this guy, but he's a really awesome looking snake. Alright, so I'm actually surprised I still have this one. This girl's name is Thor. And look at how dark it is compared to that het clown one. Pretty much both are normals. This one is Possible Het Desert Ghost. Uh, pretty much just priced as a normal, but usually when I'm selling ball python hatchlings, usually my females sell out first, and then I'm ended, I usually end up with just the males at the end of the year. So I was actually kind of surprised that I still have this one. Basically, it looks just like a normal, and as far as the Het Desert Ghost, I don't think there's any markers as far as Het Desert Ghost that you can really tell. This one has a really interesting belly pattern. Usually the normals have kind of a similar belly pattern, kind of like a like a mixed up pattern like that. Sometimes the normals can really vary from one to the other. As the regular alien heads on the sides would make a really good pet, would make a really good breeder, especially possible het desert ghost if you can actually prove that out too. So yeah, that's a that's a really awesome snake right there. All right, so here's another one that he thought I was feeding him when I opened the tub and he came flying out trying to bite a rat. I thought that was hilarious. Just after I was saying, yeah, these guys are real gentle, yeah. But yeah, usually the feeding response on these, you know, all of these are really high. So when you're opening the tub, you know, first reaching your hand in there, they couldn't mistake your finger for a rat or a mouse. But this guy is uh, pretty much the same as the last one. He is a normal, possible head desert ghost. And this is a male, pretty much the same clutch mate as that female on the last one. This guy's name is Hope. Pretty much just looks like a regular normal. Kind of have a crazy belly pattern like a lot of your normals. 
Uh, as far as I know, there's no markers for head desert ghost, so uh, you'd have to breed it to figure out if it's desert ghost. Like breed it with another, like a visual desert ghost, or it would make a really good pet. Look at how big he's getting. Really super big. Yeah, I'd say most people when they're buying a snake like this, uh, usually they buy it as a pet. Kind of the, the least expensive that you can buy. Looking for a pet for your kids? This is it right here. <laughs> All right, so take a look at this one. This guy's name is Snoopy. Snoopy is a normal 100% head desert ghost on this one. So I actually bred my visual desert ghost to another snake to get this one. Look at how big he is. <laughs> Massive already. And if you actually look at this one, it's, it's interesting on this. It almost has a different pattern on the side. I don't know if there's, you can tell, a head desert ghost from from a possible as far as markers I don't think so looks pretty normal to me maybe a little bit uh, almost looks like there's a head stamp on this one if you look at the top of the head It'd be interesting to kind of compare uh, the possibles with the uh, I haven't heard of anyone who said there's markers so it would be interesting to see a whole bunch of normals lined up with a whole bunch of hats and see if you could pick out some differences between the two to see if you can actually find some markers but as far as I know you can't tell other than the breeding so from the breeding you know 100% sure that this one does contain one copy of the desert ghost all right so take a look at this one look at how beautiful she is compared to those other normals this is what het clown can do to a normal look at how bright it is and I'm actually surprised I still have this this girl's name is River. She is a normal 100% head clown. Look at how beautiful the head clown. I mean, just even as a pet, I would say that this one is so beautiful how bright it is. Uh, I guess they're all beautiful in their own way. It's just a little bit different of a pattern. Usually with the head clowns, you can see kind of more white coming up in the alien heads. This girl's a little bit head shy. <laughs> And take a look at that. Almost like a clear belly with the het clowns. It seems like like it kind of cleared up the belly a bit. But I was actually just surprised at how much of an influence the het clown has on the color and seems like on the pattern with a lot of the white coming up into the patterns on the sides and how bright the patterns are all around, which is pretty amazing. I, I didn't really think there was that much of an influence from the het clown, but after seeing this, I was actually surprised this one's still going, this one's still for sale because most people just go through and they'll buy like all my females, you know, just starting out breeding. They don't care if they're normals or hats or possible hats. A lot of people just snap these up because it's a really inexpensive way to get into breeding ball pythons. All right, so here's the last one. This guy's name is Destroyer. Look at how big he is. He has been destroying some rodents. <laughs> He is really super chunky. This guy is just a normal possible head desert ghost. Usually, you know, the possible head desert ghost I just sell as the same price of a normal. I don't really increase, you know, usually with hats, you can actually increase the price a little bit if it's 100%. But with the possible, usually not. But look at how big it's. This one, I'd say this one's <laughs> definitely big enough to breed. He's definitely bigger than a hatchling. He's like a, he's like an adult already almost, which is kind of crazy. This guy, let's see. Oh, he's got a little bit of a stuck shed right around his neck. I'd have to bring him up to the sink. Kind of has almost brown eyes. Take a look at his eyes. Kind of a brownish black. It's kind of interesting. See is what his belly pattern looks like. He is so thick and chunky. It's pretty amazing. Usually once they get up on weaned rats, they grow really super fast, which is pretty amazing. <laughs> it's got like a normal kind of a belly pattern, I'd say, on this guy. Pretty awesome snake right there. Would make a great pet. You wouldn't have to worry about like raising up a hatchling trying to get him you know, off of the live. Boy, look at how big he is. Almost covers my whole arm. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had hatchlings this long to where they get this big. That's pretty amazing. Oh, and he's going to the bathroom all over. <laughs> oh, he just made a mess all over my tablecloth. 
All right, I'm gonna have to throw my tablecloth in the, in the laundry now after this guy just made one big mess all over the place. All right, so that's pretty much it. Uh, if you want any of these or ask any more questions about them, you can contact me over on Morph Market. That's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.